On this incredibly windy day, I'd like to talk to you about resistance. I don't see many people cycling today. When you're uh, on a road bike and you're facing a headwind, it begins to play some real head games with you. You want to turn back. You look at your computer and you see how slow you're going and you beat yourself up. And then you begin to feel your quads burn and it reminds you why you're doing this. A few years ago, I got some dogs and I needed to run them. This bike was really too fast for them. So I built a 1970s version of a Fixie slash Rat Rod. And I would run my dogs with this bike and it provided the resistance that I needed. It kept me at the speed that uh, they needed to go and it provided the proper workout for me. Resistance can be a great thing. It can really build us to be the people we need to be. But oftentimes, just like cycling in the wind, it begins to play some head games with us. We begin to ask the questions. Why evil? Why is there evil? And in particular, why me? Why is it happening to me? And then you'll bleed into where is God in all of this? You might think, should a Christian ask these kind of questions? Well, David asked these in the Psalms. David wanted to know, why were the righteous suffering? And the other question is, how long, O oh Lord, would the righteous suffer? And I think that these are fair questions. And we're kind of perplexed, I think, when we read the Gospels and we think that Jesus is going to do a couple of things. We think that maybe he's going to come and just get rid of all of the evil. And he's going to say that uh, we really shouldn't kind of suffer through it. But there's a perplexing passage in Luke 13. It says, there were present at that season some that told of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye, these Galileans, were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you nay, but except you repent, and ye shall be likewise perish. Boy, this is not the answer that they wanted. They wanted the injustice to be taken care of, an answer for it. And Jesus gave them an eternal perspective. Now, let's read on. Or those 18 upon when the Tower of Shalom fell, and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem. I tell you nay, except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. This is what you're going to find. When you read through the Gospels, you're going to find that Jesus says you've got to have an eternal perspective. The only thing that get, kept me going in the wind was knowing that the resistance that I was facing was going to make me stronger, and I kept focusing on the end. This is what you find in the Word of God. So whether your life is like an Italian road bike or if it's like this old fixie, the difficulties are making us stronger and we have a hard time facing that. And I think the disparage is this. We're too concerned about how we feel in the moment as opposed to aligning our lives with the Word of God and with Jesus. I think that's where the difficulty is. And I think that we want heaven now. Our devotional text is 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Wow. We're going through all of this that we might look like Christ. That's what Christians is. Little Christ. Those that look like Christ. And that's what the Lord is doing in us and through us. So what do we have to do? Well, 
just like the bike. We got to face it. We got to face the wind. And we've got to know that it's making us stronger. And then we've got to see that our comfort is in him. In Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, that's what he said. We need to understand that we are yoked with him. And in reality, our strength comes from him. He's what gets us through. It's not just our willpower. It's not just our brute force. It's not in us to get through the things that are really going to try us because this is a spiritual battle. Too many times we just look on the physical plane and think that everything should be great. Folks, we're in war right now. This is spiritual war. This is a battle. This is a struggle. This is a fight. It happens here. That headwind creates some head games. And if we're not trusting on the Lord, we'll lose. Heaven will come. Heaven will come. But right now, it's a bit of a battle. And so, we ought to expect some resistance. Expect some resistance from the world. Not from one another, but from the world. The encouragement is that Jesus Christ faced it for us. And he will, through us, he will make us victorious. May God bless you. Thank you so much. It's incredibly windy, but it is a beautiful day. And we thank the Lord for that. God bless.